Welcome back. It's to one on one, and I have with me Dr. Chris David, a futurist, a politician, and call him a, a, a financial expert. But let's look at some day to day issues as we speak. 2023 is already been discussed in many quarters, even when some of them are denying it and they're about. And one thing that might be a dominant discussion is the issue of zoning arrangement. And it's, it's, uh, we've heard people like you who preach <laughs> meritocracy uh, as against zoning arrangement. But what exactly is the reality you live with? Well, uh you, I think I need to share more light about the concept of equality, uh, meritocracy, and some of those tenets that uh, will actually give us uh, peace, progress, and prosperity. Uh, the concept of equality simply means that we are all created equally. No race, no tribe, no religion is superior to the other. Then every Nigerian must have equal opportunity to excel. That is the concept of equality. And that is the concept that also drives the rule of law. That's why we said everybody is equal before, before the, the law. law. Now, the concept of meritocracy is not saying that though we are all equal, we are gifted in different measures. So to assess the opportunities that are available, you have to do that based on the gifts or your talent or the skills that you have. So that is where competence not set in. Now, talking about uh, issue of zoning and all that, it, it's, it's not a bad thing to say, uh, for instance, the presidency is going to be zoned to South East in 2023. The question now is that the people that will run from that zone, do they marry the position? So that is where meritocracy steps in. So it's not enough to say, uh, based on the principle of equality, let's allow the Southeast to run. We must also make sure that the best from the Southeast is being given the opportunity to run. Now, there is also one principle that um, is rare in this space, which is the principle of excellence. We don't exhibit excellence in Nigeria. Now, um, excellence, you know, Dubai, that all of us adore and trying to uh, visit, is built on the principle of excellence, that continuous improvement on our position. And that's why you see, when you get there this month, by the time you are going there next month, the things are changing. Exactly. Yeah, so that's why in Nigeria, I, I somehow um, uh, sad when I see the way uh, our leaders talk about building infrastructure and all that. For instance, look at our Ray project. We are borrowing massively, but we are actually still 20 or 30 years behind the current infrastructure for railway. So we are not pursuing the principle of excellence, excellence. in whatever thing uh, we do. And that's why you see things uh, don't actually turn out the way we expect them. The word excellence in this context now looks a bit controversial in the sense that, oh, excellence sometimes is attached to how deep your pocket is. And if we have to borrow, and in your words, we borrowed massively, we borrowed to, to an extent that a lot of people are getting scared, and you still want quality. Don't you think it is the case of excellence being relegated to the background because of our pocket? Well, it, could, could, what is, what is uh, more relevant? To build an infrastructure that is fit for purpose, or for just having an infrastructure. So the principle of excellence that I am espousing here is what you see in Singapore, is what you see in Dubai, is what you see in, in, in Switzerland. In fact, in Switzerland, if you don't have 
skill sets, you cannot survive in Switzerland. Because we expect that you improve on whatever skills you have on a daily basis. So if we have to do anything, anything that is worth doing well, then it should be done well. Very well, exactly. But okay, let's, because of time, let's also look at um, this budgeting system, which um, from time to time I hear your opinions, I read, read about your opinions, and uh, I'm asking, the previous government was accused of even borrowing to pay salaries. And we've had situations where it is usually 80, 90 to 10 in terms of ratio for, 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 for um, recurrent against capital. Capital is always at the, uh, at the receiving hand. So how do we build a budgeting system that will really focus on building infrastructure? The truth is that we've not set our priority rights. And that's why we keep having the kind of budgets we churn out year in, year out. Now, it will shock you to see that we have been budgeting deficits in the past uh, five years and increasing every year. However, our expenditure profile, I'm talking about overheads, have not changed. Is even getting increased? Yeah, it's increasing. So that is what we are talking about. Now, if truly you feel that it is important to have uh, infrastructure or to increase, to show up your capital budget, then you need to retweak your expenditure profile. Now, uh, I use two models in analyzing uh, budget, uh, budget. For instance, one is relevance. Relevant, when you are budgeting, what are you budgeting? Is it relevant to the people? Then the second one is realistic. Whatever figures you are putting forward, are they realistic? Now, these two parameters will help you to churn out an, an efficient and effective uh, budget and it will improve even your performance because these two parameters will make sure that you set your budget uh, priority right in terms of even your income generation and your expenditure. Let's be more specific now. When you talk about relevance and you talk about some of these issues, you remember the war to get the minimum wage upgraded to 30,000 and you also know how you know, many state governors could not even pay these salaries. So these salaries are usually the issue. So if you were the president, like you are aiming to be now, how will you find a way of reducing this overhead cost? The, the truth is, it is not the salary that is the issue. It is what? It is order overheads. In terms of uh, allowances? allowances, the, the, the maintenance, the running cost, those are the issues. In fact, our reward system is actually not right. So uh, for us to get the best from the OCC, and that means our reward system needs to be redesigned. And you cannot be paying somebody 30000 in 2020 and you are beating your chest that you are doing something that is word of praise. So we need to retweak the, our reward system. Some people are taking more than their fair share, while others are welloping in, 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 po in poverty. Interesting. Uh, I understand that uh, my time is almost up. This one is one for the road. Is Dr. Chris David's poster going to be in 2023? For now, I have not decided. So we can't, we should just call you former presidential candidate? Yeah, if, if this is 2020 and I don't want to um, be, distracted. Be, be distracted. And um, I want to see somebody from the Southeast running for that position. And I will gladly support a competent person 
from Southeast. This is based on the spirit of equality and uh, meritocracy. Crazy. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris David, a futurist and CEO of Foresight. Thank you for your insight and we wish you all the best. But Thank it's still safe to call you a politician, right? Yeah. <laughs> The yeah. word politician is, is not something bad. Politicians are actually supposed to be statesmen. Exactly. Thank you so, so much. So I am a statesman. Thank you so much. And that's how far we can go on today's edition of One on One. I've been speaking with Dr. Chris David. Let's do it again another time when we come up with another interesting guest that will give us more insight on issues affecting the polity. I am Coyote Ladeinde saying bye. Thank you.